So when you're ready to look at data, you can just go to that file and double click on it. And uh, it should open up in the qual browser. Now, in this qual browser, you're going to have two windows. The top is the chromatogram. The bottom is the mass spectrum. When you're managing these two windows, it's important to pay attention to that little thumbtack icon uh, in the top right corner of each of the windows there. When you click on the thumbtack, that turns it green, and that means you've pinned that particular window. In this case, the mass spectrum is green. The thumbtack is green, so it's pinned. That's how you want it to be most of the time. What that means is that when we click on the chromatogram here, wherever we click on the chromatogram, the mass spectrum for that point in time pops up in the window on the bottom. So see, we're clicking here and here, and we're looking at all, these are different mass spectra at different points in time. You can also click on one point, and here I'm pushing the sideways arrow, and that will scroll through uh, the mass spectra near that point that I clicked. So let's look at some peaks. So if we click on this guy right here, this is 304. And that corresponds to the expected mass for cocaine. Now we can't say for sure that this is cocaine just based on that. I know that there's cocaine in this, but we can say that that mass is consistent with the mass of cocaine. So you can see here the structure for cocaine, the chemical formula, and if we take that C17H21NO4 and calculate the, the mass of cocaine, we get 303. But because we're looking for positive ions here, and we're doing electrospray, we're going to see the protonated molecule, which is the mass plus an extra H plus, and that's at 304. So that's what that peak is at 304, and the 305 is the isotope peak. So this is our cocaine peak. I put the log P there because you'll be able to see that these peaks in the LC alluded in the order that we would expect based on the log P. This is a C18 column with water with a little bit of formic acid in, as solvent A and acetonitrile with a little bit of formic acid as solvent B. So we expect the compounds to elute from least nonpolar to most nonpolar or from lowest log P to highest log P and that is the order that they eluded here. So let's look at another one of these peaks. So when we click on this very first peak over here we get this peak at 136 which correlates to what we would expect for the protonated molecule for amphetamine. And again, you can see its log P is a little bit less than uh, cocaine, or a lot less rather. And so it comes out uh, much earlier than cocaine on this C18 column. When we click on that third peak, we see that peak at 251, and that corresponds to methaquilone where the protonated molecule here is 251. And again, the log P is what we would expect uh, based on its elution order. Finally, this last peak, we click on it and we get that peak at 289, which corresponds to the protonated molecule of testosterone. And testosterone is quite nonpolar, comes out last, you can see based on its log P. An interesting thing about testosterone, though, is it's a good illustration of how you don't need an amine to be protonated in, as a, to a gas phase ion in electrospray you can see that testosterone has no amine, and if we were in solution, if you were being asked an exam question on sample prep or acids and bases or something, it wouldn't be a good answer to say, oh, I expect testosterone to accept a proton. But in the gas phase, uh, in an electrospray source, testosterone accepts a proton just fine and becomes the M plus H protonated molecule. So we've looked at all the MS spectra here. These are MS1 spectra, or kind of the normal mass spectra. Uh, next, we'll look at MSMS -MS spectra. But before we look at that video, I want to show you one more trick here. And that is, it's a useful trick if you don't see a peak that you expect to see. So there's something you expect to be in there. You know that it's in there. You can hunt for it um, by specifying the mass in the chromatogram. Also, if you have overlapping peaks in the LC, your chromatography didn't go well, then you can separate those peaks by searching for specific masses. So if I had some mixture where I knew testosterone was in there, but my chromatography didn't go well, I know I'm looking for 289, 
then I can go ahead and put the thumbtack on the top spectrum, go to ranges here, and right now I'm displaying a tick only, the total line chromatogram, but I'm going to put a second chromatogram on there and say show me the chromatogram specifically for 289. So only plot that chromatogram with the waxes is 289. And you can see this cleans up the chromatography beautifully. So now I just see that testosterone peak and sometimes when you don't even see a peak in the tick spectrum, you can still get a nice peak and pull a mass spectrum from that if you do one of these chromatograms where you select a specific mass.